Welcome back to the channel. Today, we will be covering the preliminary design of steel portal frame. Portal frames are a simple and very common type of framed structure. Steel portal frames, in particular, are a cost-effective structural system to support building envelopes, such as warehouses and shopping complexes requiring large column-free spaces. The loading scheme on the portal frame usually includes dead load, imposed load, services, wind load, crane loads, etc. In the plastic analysis of portal frames, preliminary analysis is usually carried out to determine the member sizes before detailed checks are carried out to determine the adequacy of the selected sections. Weller's chart, graphical method is usually used to determine the plastic moments that can enable initial sizing of members. The simplicity of the charts depends on a series of three charts developed by Weller. The application of the method relies on the following assumptions. The rafter depth is approximately span over 55. The haunch length is approximately span over 10. The rafter slope lies between 10 to 20 degrees. The ratio of span to eave height is between 2 to 5. The hinges in the mechanism are formed at the level of the underside of the haunch in the column, and close to the apex. Each chart requires a knowledge of the geometry of the frame, and the design loading as input data in order to determine approximate sizes for the rafter and column member. Let's start with the following application example. The proposed pinned base portal frame, for an industrial building is defined at the concept design stage, by the line diagram, where the lines, represent the centerline of the members. The portals are at 5 meters centers, and the length of the building is 40 meters. The building width is 30 meters. 6 meters height to eaves. 10 meters height to roof top. The angle of inclination of roof is 14.9 degree. As we mentioned earlier, the length of the haunch is 10% of the span of the frame equals 0.1 times 30 meters, which equals 3 meters. The following loads have been selected for the analysis. Roof sheeting, 0.05 kilonewtons per meter squared. Insulation, 0.1. Purlins, 0.05. Rafter, 0.15. Services, 0.15 kilonewtons per meter squared. Therefore, total dead load equals 0.5 kilonewtons per meter squared. These dead loads have been measured on a slope. So, load on plan equals 0.5 divided by cosine 14.9, which equals 0.52 kilonewtons per meter squared. As the spacing of portal frame equals 5 meters, hence, dead load on roof equals 0.52 times 5 meters, which equals 2.6 kilonewtons per meter. For this analysis we will adopt imposed load of 0.75 kilonewtons per meter squared. Therefore, imposed load on the roof equals 0.75 times 5 meters, which equals 3.75 kilonewtons per meter. The vertical load, dead and imposed at the ultimate state, is usually used to determine the member's sizes for preliminary design purposes. At the detailed design stage, other load combinations should also be checked. So, total factored load equals 1.4 times 2.6, plus, 1.6 times 3.75, which equals 9.65 kN per meter. To use the graphical method, four parameters are required. Span divided by height to eaves equals 30 over 6, which equals 5. Rise over span equals 4 divided by 30, which equals 0.133. Vertical load WL equals 9.65 kN per meter times 30 meters which equals 290 kN. WL squared equals 9.65 times 30 squared, which equals 8,685 kN meter. From the first graph, we should obtain horizontal thrust at feet. We have rise over span, 0.133, and span to eaves height 5 meter. They should meet here, so we have the ratio H over WL, equals approximately, 0.31. Hence H equals, 0.31 times WL 290 kN, which equals 90 kN. From the following graph, we should be able to obtain the required moment capacity of the rafter. Again, we have, rise over span, 0.133, and span to eaves, 5. 
they should meet here, so we have the ratio MPR over WL squared equals approximately 0.0275. Therefore required moment capacity of rafter equals 0.0275 times WL squared 8685 kN m which equals 240 kN m. Lastly, from the following graph, we need to obtain the required moment capacity of the column. Again, we have, rise over span, 0.133 and span 2 eaves 5. They should meet here, so we have the ratio, MPL over WL squared, equals approximately, 0.0535. Therefore required moment capacity of column equals, 0.0535 times WL squared 8685 kN m, which equals 465 kN m. Now we should be able to determine the plastic modulus of both the rafter and column. We will use a yield strength of 275 newton per millimeter squared. As a result, the plastic modulus for the rafter equals 240 kilonewton meter times 10 to 6. As we need to convert this to newton millimeter, then divided by the yield strength 275, the result is going to be in millimeter cubed. However, as the units used in the table is by centimeter cubed. Therefore, this should be divided by 1000, so we get 873 centimeter cubed. Similarly, the plastic modulus for the column equals 465 kilonewton meter times 10 to 6 divided by yield strength 275, divided by 1000, we get 1691 centimeter cubed. Now from these figures, we should be able to find the adequate section sizes from the table where the plastic modulus is greater than the calculated ones. We choose 356 by 171 by 51 for the rafter as plastic modulus 904 cm3 is greater than 873. For the column, we choose 457 by 191 by 82. 1842 cm cubed is greater than 1691 cm cubed. These trail sections are adequate for preliminary design, and in the detailed design the following are usually checked. In plane stability. Column stability. Rafter stability below the apex. Rafter stability above the haunch. Eaves haunch stability. Deflection. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe, and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.